Okay. Well, like, like was said, uh, my name is Mike Dodge. I come from Lehigh, Utah, and I'm an employee for Vivint Smart Home, one of their senior software engineers. And uh, I have a Twitter, ha Twitter handle on here. I don't do a lot on Twitter, but you know, it's a good way to contact me if you have questions about what I'm spouting out today. <clears throat> but uh, back in the good old days, like we were talking about, like, like the intro talked about, web development was a lot simpler. Back in 1999, when I was graduating from high school, uh, HTML 3.2 or HTML 4 was, was primarily what you wrote your website in. Uh, we had images, GIF, JPEG, uh, PNG, and that's about where you stopped. I mean, if, if, you were, if you were really advanced, you might get into the CSS version 2, which had just barely been released. Uh, you might start with ES2 for your JavaScript, which was very limited in what it could do. Um, and then when, when it came time to deploy your website, it was just a directory of files. It was very easy to find what you needed to change when someone asked for A or B to, to be changed, because it was, it was organized by files. Um, so what has changed in the past 20 years? In some ways, not much, and in some ways, pretty much everything. HTML and CSS only bumped one version number. We went to HTML5 and CSS3, but there's a lot of good stuff in there, and they're kind of rolling releases, so uh, you're not gonna see any new versions beyond that. Uh, CSS, there's a lot more methodologies, and with CSS version three, a lot more uh, features, so we don't have to use those table-based layouts anymore. Um, images, GIFs are still there, but outside of the meme space, you don't see them very much. Uh, and when you're talking about JPEGs or other such things, you often have to worry about making sure you have two or three different versions so that you can uh, cater to all of the responsive designs. But the biggest change has come in the JavaScript sphere. We are at ES10 now, and every year it goes up by one number. Um, there's a lot of new functionality in there. Uh, and the ecosystem surrounding JavaScript has exploded. We have uh, Babel and TypeScript and uh, Webpack for splitting and, and optimizing all of our code to make sure that what we send down to, down to browsers is, is not going to hog all of our bandwidth. Um, if there's a bug in production and we don't have source maps enabled, good luck finding how to fix it, because all of our files are combined together and minified, and you've got your one-letter variables. It, and if you don't now know how to configure Webpack just so, then, then it can be very daunting to find out where you need to go when a bug comes up. Um, sometimes it makes you feel like this. Um, Front-end development would, used to be easy, but there's so much stuff that we've had to learn, it kind of makes me wish for the good old, good old days. Well, don't panic. You can see there's a theme now. <laughs> there, there is a way that we can write our web applications just like we did back in 1999. So get your towels ready. We're gonna get rid of the loaders, we're gonna get rid of the build processes, the vendor bundles, no more code splitting, no more caching issues with files that have names that mean nothing to us. Uh, we're not getting rid of everything, but we're gonna get rid of the things that can often get in the way. We still have the ability to use the NPM ecosystem and all the wonderful community code that's out there. We can still keep the Vue CLI. It does a lot of great things for us. Um, hot module reloading, rapid prototyping, those are all wonderful things. Uh, it also enables, enables us to use scoped CSS or CSS modules where the, the code lives with the CSS that directly affects that component. You can keep Babel and TypeScript if you want to. I'm not saying that you don't have to get rid of those things. But what, I, what I'm trying to emphasize is that we don't, have to, we don't have to go through all of the tooling. We can get rid of a good portion of it. The reason that this is possible is because Java, uh, JavaScript modules have 88% support around the world. Now, in some countries it might be lower, in some countries it might be higher, but that's the direction that it's moving. And so bundling our applications, it's, it's almost as if we don't need to do it anymore. And, there, there, is a, uh, there is a movement to push things that direction. So I'm gonna demonstrate uh, quickly here the bare minimum that you, need to, that you need to do in order to get to that point. I'm going to keep a project that was scaffolded by the Vue CLI, and it still uses the Vue template compiler. 
because the browser itself doesn't understand what to do with your view single file components. We do have to convert that to JavaScript, but it's a very simple process, and we still end up with one file per component. Uh, Rollup is what I'm using to do this, but you don't have to use Rollup. You can have uh, functions in your editor that run on save that will do the same thing. Um, and pika.dev, this is something I discovered recently. They are providing a number of tools. They're trying to push the web forward, trying to get people to adopt this mentality. Snowpack is primarily the tool that will allow this to happen. It scans your code, looks at the node modules that you're using, and extracts the ES modules that you actually need for your website to run, and just places those in a directory that you upload directly to your server. They also run an NPM catalog that is curated for node modules that are ES6 friendly, and they also have a CDN. So if you want to leverage that to speed up your website, you can use that. Now this is the GitHub ad address that you can download the demo code from that I'm gonna briefly go over here. I'm rapidly running out of time, and so I may not get to show you everything. But I'll give you a few more seconds to take a look at this and, and write it down or bookmark it or whatever you have. Okay, real quick. In the package.json, you'll notice that the build script that uh, Webpack or, the, or that view uh, gives you has been replaced. It's been replaced with one that uses Snowpack so that Snowpack can grab all of your dependencies. And it runs this convert process. And the convert process in this setup uses Rollup to convert your view, view components to JavaScript com uh, files. And that's, that's it. Um, down here in the dependencies, I have ES module shims. And the reason for this is because um, I want to use the names of the known modules when I import them. I don't want to have to write out the full path to them. And this allows you to map the name of the module to a full path. And it allows the browsers to understand that. Chrome supports it natively under a, development, uh, under a developer flag because it's still not a standard, but it's heading that way. Um, and then down here, in the dev dependencies, you'll see that I have Snowpack in there. And lastly, inside of the Snowpack config option, I'm explicitly telling Snowpack I'm not going to include ES module shims in my code, but it needs to be in the browser. Make sure that it's there. Inside of the HTML file, you'll notice that I am loading this ES module shims. And then I'm loading what's called the, in, the import map. This is generated by Snowpack, and it's what ties the name of the node module to the actual file location. And then down here, I'm loading the main JS file that is, that, it, that is what I'm actually writing. I thought I had that turned off. Okay. The only other thing that I need to do, well, the only other two things I need to do, uh, Vue is expecting that the index.html file lives inside of the slash public directory. But because we're just uploading this directly, we've moved that out to the root, and I'm telling, it, I'm telling it about that change. In Babel, when I'm in production, I want to make sure that Babel leaves the modules as modules. And so I tell it, don't process the modules. Just leave them as they are. Um, if, I'm in, if I'm using the Vue CLI for rapid development, I use the default Babel config. And in main.js, if I import just Vue by itself, it's going to resolve to the version that is uh, listed in package.json, which is not the one that we want to use in the browser. So I do put that path in directly, but, that's, but uh, all of the other imports and stuff that I do will be the exact same. And so if I open this up, I'm going to run the dev command. This is showing what happens when you use the Vue CLI. And it's going to be running the exact same code. And you can see it takes a lot more time because it's doing the bundling and identifying how it needs to split things. OK, I am deep thought. I'm going to reload this with the network tab open here. OK, you can see there's my chunk with all of my vendors code in it. It's 2.57 megs. There's my app. And uh, Webpack has done its thing. 
Greeting Zephod, the answer is 42. Ask the question, sorry, earth was destroyed. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go into the directory that it created. Oh, sorry, I don't even need to do that. Okay, I'm going to serve up the directory that I'm currently in. It's already converted all those files for me. And if we go back to this page and reload, you'll notice a change over here. It's importing individual modules now. There's my main.js, there's my deep thought.js, there's my app.js, there's, uh, there's individual files for each NPM module. And if a bug occurs, it will give me the file name which corresponds directly to my original view file. And everything still functions the exact same way that I need it. There was no build process involved. It all happened in, in the background and Snowpack resolved those dependencies for me. And if I look at the file structure of my project, you can see right here, web modules includes all the things that I imported from Node. It found them, identified them. It can even do tree shaking and get rid of the parts of the modules you're not using. So you, you can truly code like it, like it was back in the old days and not have to worry about a build process anymore. And that's it. Thank you.